seated. Today, in order to help us remember Jesus in communion, we're going to be opening our Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Uh, if you don't have a Bible with you, we'd love to get one into your hands. So please just raise your hand up, and uh, one of these men will get one into your hands. Uh, if you don't own a Bible, please feel free to keep this one as our gift to you. We'll be in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verses 9 and 10. Read with me these words of hope for the believer. For God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. If you were here a few weeks ago, you may remember from Omri's sermon that the Thessalonian church was full of believers whose present trials had them concerned about the future. And in 1 Thessalonians 5 here, Paul encourages the church with their future hope, which was based on past realities. When we remember what Jesus accomplished and what he has destined for us by his grace, then like the Thessalonians, even in the midst of tumultuous trials, which can seem to overwhelm us, we can be encouraged and we can have hope. Look, look with me again at verse 9 for these words of hope. God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Thessalonian church was in the midst of some pretty heavy trials. Members of the body of Christ were dying, and they were concerned with what was to come. And Paul encourages them here with a reminder of what was to come. Because of what Jesus accomplished, no matter your present situation, believer, you can have hope for what is to come. God destined you for salvation, not for wrath. No matter your trial, even in the midst of seemingly debilitating trials, no matter how hopeless you may be tempted to feel, your future is secure. And Paul makes it clear that not even death can get in the way of this eventuality for the believer. Look at the end of verse 10. Whether we are awake or asleep, we will live with him. Paul here uses the metaphor of sleep for the death of the believer. Not even your death or the death of a loved one who died in Christ can change this promise. This promise from God has not changed, it is not changing, and it will not change. You are destined for salvation, not for wrath, because of what Jesus accomplished. Be encouraged by this. And Paul goes on at the end of verse 9 and at the beginning of verse 10 to tell us how this was accomplished. You'll see in verses 9 and 10 that this was accomplished through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. Our hope is not an empty hope based on wishes and desires. Our hope is based on the reality of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity, died a terrible death on the cross so that our death is not the end of our hope. In his death, he took upon himself the sins of all who will believe. These very sins which destined us for wrath were covered by his blood on the cross. And as, as we remember Jesus in communion this morning, let's remember that we have this hope because he died on the cross. He took upon himself the sins of those who would believe, and he cleansed us with his righteousness. He defeated death by rising again three days after he was crucified. And he promises us here victory over death and salvation. We will live together with him. Let's remember him and praise him for this. Now this passage, which is a sweet encouragement to believers, is not so much uh, for those who will not believe. It serves as a warning for those who will not believe. The believer is not destined for wrath because he has trusted in Jesus for his salvation. Apart from this trust in Jesus, apart from repentance and belief, 
there is no salvation from the wrath which is to come. If you don't believe in Jesus and trust in him for your salvation, then you are headed for wrath and judgment. If this is you, then I implore you to repent, turn from your sin, turn from your disbelief, and turn to Jesus, your only hope for salvation. If you won't turn to Jesus at this time, trusting in him, submitting yourself to him as Lord, then as we do communion, as the elements come by, I I ask that you let them pass you by. Uh, This is a special time for believers to remember Jesus Christ who shed his body and his blood for us. But if you will not believe, if you're allowing the elements to pass you by, I encourage you to consider these verses and consider what it means to be destined for wrath apart from Jesus. And believers, take this time to praise God for his glorious grace and salvation. If you have unconfessed sin, turn from it now. Confess it to the God who sent his only son to die for you. And praise God that he has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that we might live with him. Take communion as your hearts are prepared. Men, please serve us.